All right, now like the material system, we try and keep artificial lighting and podium very simple. So again, we have two choices. We can create artificial lights from scratch in the podium light system, or we can download pre-made light fixtures into our scene from podium browser. Okay, so for this example, I'm back in the kitchen model and I've just set up a new camera angle facing the opposite direction. And I just wanna show you what happens if I take a render now before adding any artificial lights. All right, so this is our starting point. I've got the sun turned off. I'm using the default background selection with the podium twilight style, and it was rendered with the interior bright default preset. So we've got a nice neutral image that we can start spicing up with some artificial lighting. Okay, podium lets us create three kinds of artificial lights, point lights, spotlights, and light emitting materials. Now, two of these are created from the podium light system dialog. So if I click the light bulb icon, it's gonna bring up the PLS window and we can create omnidirectional lights and spotlights. Okay, so the omni light or point light as we sometimes call it is the closest thing in podium that we have to a light bulb. It's gonna emit light rays in all directions from a single point in space. So to create an omni, I select the radio button, hit create, and then it's gonna take two clicks to place the light. I choose an inference point anywhere in the model. So I can click right here on the floor and then I can move the light along any one of the three axes or place the light and stick it to any surface in the model. But I'm just gonna move it along the blue axis and stick it right here. One more click to place the light and there it is in our model. Now these do come into the scene kind of small so I sometimes like to select the light, S to scale and just make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to find in the future. Um, this doesn't change the properties of the light at all, it just makes the viewport representation a little bit easier to select. Okay, the OmniLight has two parameters attached to it, that's light color and light power. And to change either of these on an existing light, I just select that light and then change the parameters in the PLS window. Now, I could also move and duplicate this exactly like any other SketchUp object, so if I hit M, hold control to duplicate, and just place another copy on the other side of the room. I now have two copies of that podium light. But if I select this one, change the light power to five, and give it uh, maybe like a red light color so it's noticeable, and then take a render, you'll see that we have two very different lights in our scene. And obviously the red light is five times more powerful than the white light, so it's overwhelming the entire image pretty much and giving us this red cast throughout the entire room. Okay, that wraps up placing and editing Omni lights. There is one more setting that I need to talk about uh, and that's the soft Omni option. So up here in the options dialog, I flip over to the environment tab and there's a soft Omni checkbox. And what this means is that when it's checked, the shadows that are cast by an Omni light will be a little bit softer and more natural looking than if this is left unchecked but that does come at the expense of a little bit of additional render time. So I'm gonna close this, delete my two Omni lights, and then switch to this soft Omni scene that I've got set up. And I've just added a lamp with an Omni light in it, and I'm gonna take two renders with the soft Omni setting on and off. Okay, so here's the render with soft Omni turned off, and then here it is with soft Omni turned on. So you can see how it's really softening up the, the edge of this light and shadow pattern and making the render feel a lot more natural. This did increase the render time from about eight minutes to 10 minutes on my machine, uh, but I think you'll agree that in most cases it's gonna be well worth it for the added realism. We go from this to this, which I think does look a lot better. Okay, that does it for Omni lights. Let's go back into the podium light system window and take a look at spotlights. Okay, the Podium Spotlight is different from the Omni Light in the sense that it casts a cone-shaped beam instead of casting light rays in every direction. So I'm gonna select this lamp, delete it, and zoom out a little bit. Now to create a spotlight, similar to the Omni Light, it takes three clicks to place one. So I select the Spot Radio button, click Create. I'm gonna choose an inference point somewhere on the ground, move to the height that I want it, and then the third click is the target. So you can see there's a line traced from the light to wherever the cursor is, and it lets me aim where the spotlight is pointed. So if I wanted to focus on these decorations over here, I focus the dot there. I'm gonna put it right above the sofa. So we're gonna be shining the spotlight right here on the wall. Click to finalize. 
and we have our spotlight with the default light power of 1, default cone shape of inner cone 15, outer cone 45, and the color is just white. I'll cover these cone angles a little bit later, but I just want to show you what this looks like first. So I'll go ahead and click render, and here's the result. All right, so you can see the light is coming from above and to the right of the couch, and it's aimed right at the center of the sofa, just like we placed it. Uh, you can see there's a clearly defined edge and then a fall off on the left side of the image, uh, and that's because of the angle of the light. I'm going to switch to a different scene now, and we'll explore the cone shape. All right, so I'm just going to delete this and click on this spotlight scene. It's hidden the rest of the model, and all I have is this ground plane and a picnic table. And right up here is a spotlight, and this is aimed directly down at the table, but I can recreate it. So click the light. I'm going to use something super bright so we can see it. So let's go with a light power of 10, spotlight, create. I'm going to place it right in the center of the scene, about halfway up and aiming straight down at the table. Okay, so the default beam angle uses an inner cone of 15 and an outer cone of 45. Okay, so the outer cone is going to determine the overall diameter of the light shape, and then the inner cone is going to determine the light fall off. So the difference between these two numbers is going to affect how hard or how soft the edge of the light is, and I'll demonstrate that right now. So with the default settings, this is what we get. Okay, so we get pretty much what we would expect from an overhead spotlight. We've got a nice circular light shape centered right on the table and a, a decently soft fall off along the edge of this light here. Now I'm going to switch back to SketchUp and show you what happens if I increase that inner cone. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that light shape is selected. Bring this inner cone up to 44 and you'll see how tight the fall off gets. This is the result and you can see how much we've tightened up that outer edge. We went from this at 15 for the inner cone, and then this at 44. You can see the overall diameter of the light hasn't changed at all because it's still capped at 45. We've just changed the fall off. Now if I wanted to increase the overall size of the light, I could change that outer cone angle. So why don't I do that now? Make sure the light is selected, bring the outer cone angle up to something like 67 is fine, and I'm going to bring the inner cone all the way down to zero, and we'll see what happens. We should have a much larger circle of light with an extremely soft fall off from the outer cone to the inner cone. So there it is, and as you can see, by increasing the outer cone to 67 and decreasing the inner cone all the way to zero, we end up with a much softer light shape. So we went from the super tight focused spotlight to something super wide and soft. Okay, that does it for OmniLights and Spotlights. So in the next section, we're going to switch back to SketchUp and I'll start introducing light emitting materials in the Podium Materials palette. Okay, we're back in the kitchen model and we're going to talk about light emitting materials. Now, any face or surface in your SketchUp scene can be made into a light source by applying a Podium light emitting material. And these are created from the Material Properties dialog. So let's go through the process real quick of creating a light emitting material, and then I'll explain some of the common use cases for LEMs. Okay, let's make a light emitting material. So I'm just going to close this for the moment, grab the square tool, draw something out on the floor, hit P to extrude this up, space, double click, M to move, and I'm just going to drag this up into the center of the space. Right click and group it so that it's easy to select. And then we just need to apply a new material. So I'm just going to grab something from the color tray over here. Uh, this yellowish looking color looks pretty good. Uh, but instead of painting this directly on my surfaces, what I'm going to do is hit the create new material icon and then rename it so that we can find it later on. So LEM example. It's always a good idea when you use the named colors to create a new material before using them. That way you have a distinct material that you've created and you'll be able to find it later. You won't get it confused with the existing colors in the material tray. So that aside, I'll click OK. Now this doesn't have light emitting properties yet, but as soon as this is finished, we can apply it to our services. Okay, click into the group, select all, 
Grab the paint bucket tool. We've still got that material selected, so I'll paint that. And then we just need to open up the podium material properties palette again. Now, right now it says no entities selected. So I grabbed the eyedropper, color sampled that. And as you can see, we've got LEM example. Now, right now this material is just 100% diffuse and that's fine. We're gonna leave this section alone entirely. Uh, it would actually be considered wrong to add reflection or transparency to a light emitting material. So make sure that slider is at 100% diffuse. And then we're going to come down here to the LEM section and add some light power. So to turn this into a light emitting material, I just need to give this a light strength. And we'll start with something like six. Click apply. And now if I close this window and make a new render, we're going to get a light emitting surface in our model. Okay, so there's the render and here's our glowing cube casting a slightly yellow tinted light into the scene. Now if we take another look at the LEM section, you'll see there are two checkboxes beneath the light power slider. When high intensity is checked, it's going to multiply the light power by 10, so it's like changing this 6 to 60. And in an interior scene, that's going to end up giving us an image that's way too bright. As you can see on screen, the resulting image is completely blown out and unusable. So you may occasionally find uses for the high intensity checkbox, but most of the time you'll probably be using it infrequently and almost always with exterior scenes. Okay, so the hidden checkbox makes the LEM invisible to the camera but still emit light. So if I click apply, you can see we're still seeing the edges of the group, but the LEM material itself is hidden. And when I go and take a render, this is going to cast light into the scene, but we're not going to see the cube. And there's the result, pretty similar to the very first image that we made, but obviously the cube is invisible and we're not seeing the LEM reflected in any of these reflective glass surfaces. Okay, so the hidden LEM option is a really good way to add some additional light to an image without obstructing the view or adding a visible light source. As you can see, LEMs tend to cast very soft shadows and even illumination, so this is actually my preferred method of brightening up a scene that feels underlit. Okay, so that pretty much covers how to create light emitting materials from scratch. Now, if I ever wanted to make changes to this, I would just open the materials palette, select the color picker, color pick that material, and then I could change the light power or check on and off either of the check boxes. Or of course, if I wanted to change the color, I could just come into the materials tray, change this to anything I want, and it would start emitting this pinkish purplish colored light instead of the yellow that we had originally. Okay, so the LEM, in my opinion, is probably the most versatile of the podium light types, but this cube example isn't really all that demonstrative of how we use it in the real world. So in the next section of video, I'm gonna delete this cube and we'll take a look at some of the ways that LEMs are used in regular day-to-day -day visualization projects.